Hey Dragon Slayers, it's been a couple hours since my last meal. My blood sugar is 96. So I had leftovers from yesterday on top of about a half pound of ground turkey breast. So today's video is all about how the standard American diet has made us glucose dependent. The average American is eating eight times a day, pretty much every two hours for 16 hours of every 24 hour day. During this time, we managed to consume about 300 grams of carbs on average. As a result, we are in the fed state more often than not. And the average person almost never allows their liver glycogen to get low enough to allow for any significant ketosis because elevated glucose displaces fat oxidation. Um, we are all burning mostly glucose at the expense of fat oxidation for a good portion of our lives. This is not without several major consequences. First of all, our metabolism will gradually upregulate the machinery it takes to burn a particular fuel and downregulate the machinery we aren't using. This makes a ton of sense, and we would fully expect our bodies to adapt to the environment. So if you are eating a lot of carbs, then you will be upregulating the pathways for dealing with carbohydrates at the expense of fat oxidation. And similarly, if you are not eating carbs, your body has to upregulate the ability to run everything off of fat. There seems to be this sort of inertia to your metabolism. And what we have learned from studies where participants were switched from high carb to low carb diets, there seems to be a one to two week adaptation period. A lot of keto dieters refer to this as the process of fat adaptation. And it is a very real thing. Becoming fat adapted is a big vague, is a bit vague, and the exact biochemistry of this phenomena has not been completely cleared yet. However, pretty much everyone who has gone on an extended low carbohydrate diet can describe this to you. On a high carb diet, you are more tied to food. Because your liver glycogen, your main source of energy, is constantly falling, you have to eat much more frequently and you experience hunger quite a bit more frequently. Fat adaptation is the ability to live comfortably off of stored body fat and it allows for a much lower frequency of meals and a lower sense of urgency to eat when meal time finally arrives. The average American diet is suited to glucose adaptation. Most of us are trying to avoid the minor discomfort of low hepatic glycogen, and we are in a carb-fed state all day long. In addition to simple displacement of fat oxidation by dietary glucose and the upregulation of carb oxidation, plus the downregulation of fat oxidation seen with chronically high carbohydrate diets, there is one other major factor at play here and that's falling glucose levels make you hungry. About three to four hours after eating a large amount of glycemic carbohydrates, we see a significant drop in glucose and a significant rise in the hunger hormone ghrelin. What does this mean on a practical level? Well, you get hungry. And specifically, you get hungry for more carbohydrates. In studies, participants who eat a high carbohydrate breakfast have significantly higher hunger scores a few hours later than those eating fewer carbohydrates. Many of us can relate to this on a personal level. You remember the time you only had juice and toast for breakfast and three hours later you felt like you had to eat something or you were going to die of starvation? Carbs offer a lot of satiety acutely for a couple of hours, but unlike protein and fat, that, satis that satiety wears off with a vengeance followed by an increase in hunger that is often worse than if you had just simply not eaten at all in the first place. You can see how we gradually got to the point where we eat the quantity and frequency of carbs that we do in our modern American society. As a result, the carbohydrates that we intake, they have developed a state of relative dependence on dietary glucose to the point that we have to have snack breaks at work and at school 
and they're perfectly timed to raise blood sugar just when the glycogen from our ridiculously high carbohydrate breakfast cereal has worn off. That's what I've got for you guys today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember that together, you and I will slay the dreaded diabetes dragon.